Hey there guys, today I'll be giving my honest opinion and review of my Transatlantic that I took earlier this month from Miami, Florida over to the Grand Canary Island on the Asimara onward. It was an 11 night cruise leaving from Miami on February 28th and ending in the Grand Canary on March 11th, 2023. It was my first experience with Asimara and um, I'm going to be giving an honest review here going through the entertainment, the dining, the specialty dining, the main dining room, the extra options for dining, the bars, the entertainment, the ship itself, and just in general, the whole ship experience, as well as a room review here. So stay tuned as we get right into my honest review here on the Azamar Onward Transatlantic. So to start off, we're gonna be starting off with Embarkation Day in Miami, Florida. So the earliest check-in time that you could get was 2 p.m. So that's the one that I chose. I arrived in Miami in the morning. So I went to go piddle around town until two o'clock. I showed up to the port around 1.45 p.m. And they had plenty of porters outside the port as we were the only ship in town that day, which for Miami is a miracle to be the only ship in town. It was an easy process. They take your bag right away. You go up the gangway area to the check-in area uh, at two o'clock. We were able to check in. They give you a group number, which they will call you to board the ship. So it was an easy process. They start off around 2.15, 2.30 with the sweet guests and then priority, and then the guests that showed up early, then two o'clock. So the group numbers, I was group number 12, and there was about maybe 150 people before me that was able to board but around 2.30, so 30 minutes from getting to the port to on the ship, I was on the ship and heading up to the buffet at Windows Cafe. So the whole process is very simple. You just give them your room number, your passport, and the embarkation in Miami was very simple. People have said that they've waited hours before with embarkation day with Azamar in Miami, but I had no issue whatsoever. So that's nice to have no issue. And then once you get on board, you do go to the, your mustard station before you hit the buffet. Please make sure you go to the mustard station. In Miami, they actually made us go to the mustard station first, but they did serve you champagne, which is a nice note as you board the ship. You listen to a very important safety message. So for that, kudos to Azamara for a nice, easy, stressless transition onto the ship to start off your wonderful vacation. Next, we're gonna be talking about the dining venues on board the Azamara Onward. For being such a small ship that holds 700 passengers, here on the Transatlantic, we have 450 guests. They have many different options that I was really surprised with. So to start off with, we're gonna be going up to deck number nine to the Windows Cafe, which is the buffet on board here, the Azamara Onward. It has excellent selection for breakfast, Sometimes they're open for lunch at port, definitely on a sea day, which we're going to be having plenty of sea days on this transatlantic. If you choose a transatlantic, you have plenty of sea days. And then they have a dinner buffet. They have daily, nightly, different choices. So you have a taste of France, you have a taste of Italy, you have a taste of Asia. So you'll have specialty food in the buffet from each of those countries. Each night, they'll have American night, uh, they'll have seafood night, many, many different wonderful choices up there at Windows Cafe. I love to go there for breakfast and have a Eggs Benedict, an omelet made to your choices, uh, freshly made for you, and they'll bring it right to your seat. So it's not necessarily a sit down place, you do sit down, but you do have to go grab your normal buffet food so if you want cereal if you want eggs if you want oatmeal or something like that you can go grab it from the buffet then they have the discovery restaurant down on deck five where this is going to be your sit down restaurant where you're going to be served while you're sitting down like at a normal restaurant down there at the discovery cafe they have breakfast and dinner the dinner selections are really excellent. They always have a steak, they'll have chicken, they'll have fish, they'll have your usual seafood, um, 
my seafood shrimp cocktail to start off with, a filet mignon every other night, uh, you'll have your chicken, and they'll have specialty menu choices each single night for you down there at the Discovery Cafe. And the breakfast down there as well is, is excellent. You'll have your normal eggs to order, your waffles, your pancakes, your eggs benedict, smoked salmon, etc. So that's an excellent place as well. Now moving on to the patio. The patio is open for lunch and surprisingly people don't know about the dinner. Might be the most underrated place to me. On board the ship. The food that comes out of the patio is unbelievable and really, really, really underrated. Their lunch there, they have the burgers, they have a Greek burger, they have chicken wraps, they have spicy tuna wraps. Um, the fries are excellent out of there. They have beef kebabs. They have anything that you could think of spring rolls. The patio is an amazing place. The cook there, Jessica, is amazing. So if you're ever on the Asamoah onward and you see Jessica there, make sure you stop by for lunch. But dinner is a secret place here on the Asamoah onward. There's only two to three couples a night that go there. And this place is amazing. Again, your cook will be Jessica, firing off the grill for you there. And they'll have steak at night. They have two different choices of steak. They usually have a fresh fish of the day for you. The, the soup of the day is an always excellent choice. And uh, if you ever love uh, barbecue ribs, they give you a full rack of barbecue ribs. You can order any side, mashed potato, uh, green beans, spinach, you can get asparagus, uh, salad, mac and cheese is the one I was thinking of. That's the one I slowing down there for a sec. I couldn't think the mac and cheese is excellent. And you can get your normal burger there as well, a hot dog if that's what you want. Anything that you want, she will make for you and it is very, very tasty and delicious. Now moving on to the patio. The patio is open for lunch and surprisingly, people don't know about the dinner. Might be the most underrated place to me. On board the ship. The food that comes out of the patio is unbelievable and really, really, really underrated. Their lunch there, they have the burgers, they have a Greek burger, they have chicken wraps, they have spicy tuna wraps. Um, the fries are excellent out of there. They have beef kebabs. They have anything that you could think of spring rolls. The patio is an amazing place. The cook there, Jessica, is amazing. So if you're ever on the Asamoah onward and you see Jessica there, make sure you stop by for lunch. But dinner is a secret place here on the Asamoah onward. There's only two to three couples a night that go there. And this place is amazing. Again, your cook will be Jessica firing off the grill for you there and they'll have steak at night they have two different choices of steak they usually have a fresh fish of the day for you the, the soup of the day is an always excellent choice and uh, if you ever love uh, barbecue ribs they give you a full rack of barbecue ribs you can order any side mashed potato uh, green beans spinach you can get asparagus uh, salad mac and cheese is the one I was thinking of that's the one I slowing down there for a sec I couldn't think the mac and cheese is excellent and you can get your normal burger there as well a hot dog if that's what you want anything that you want she will make for you and it is very very tasty and delicious there are two specialty dining venues here on Azamar onward first off you have prime C which is going to be the steakhouse they have excellent filet mignon you can get rack of lamb up there. You can get the Chilean, the Chilean sea bass. All three choices are excellent. They do have other choices. They have veal, well, there you have on your own. any piece of meat, ribeye, have... filet mignon, like I mentioned earlier. They're all excellent. And the service up there is top notch. You also have, also you have Aquafina, the Italian restaurant on board. 
They have excellent pasta. You can get veal up there as well. Excellent fish selections as well up there. I had the red snapper the other night. It was excellent. The pasta as well, the shrimp risotto, the shrimp uh, linguine, anything, the pasta is excellent up there. If you love seafood, that's an excellent place to stop off. And of course, get your classic pasta as well up there in Aquafina. Uh, but one thing I will have to say, the choices of food here on Asamara Onward are excellent and you don't have to go to specialty dining to get a great meal. You can get a great meal at the patio, Discovery Cafe, the main dining room, the buffet up at Windows Cafe. Here on this ship, you will get excellent food no matter where you go to. The specialty dining is excellent, but you can get the same quality food even at the patio where you don't have to pay extra for it. But if you do like to take your date out for a night, it's an excellent place to watch the sunset up on deck number 10. When going on an Azamara onward cruise or an Azamara cruise at all, don't forget about the Mosaic Cafe. Yes, they serve excellent coffee there, from mochas, lattes, cappuccinos, it's an excellent tea selection. Yes, I do love a nice coffee place, and for being a small place on the ship, the stuff that comes out of there is excellent coffee. Big kudos to Azamaro to have an excellent place here on the ship to get a coffee, especially on those long transatlantic mornings when it does get a little cold outside. It's nice to have a nice cappuccino or warm hot chocolate. They do have excellent pastries there in the morning, like croissants, danishes, muffins, etc. In the afternoon, they have cheeses, sandwiches, turkey, roast beef, tuna, etc. And at dinner, they have extra little desserts, cakes, brownies, etc. Excellent place to go throughout the day and get little bites if you are hungry. But to sum up the dining experience here on Azamara, you have your mostly highs, the buffet, the patio, the main dining room, the specialty dinings are all excellent. There is no need in my opinion to pay for the specialty dining. Yes, it's excellent up at Prime Sea in Aquafina, but the food throughout the whole entire ship is to the same quality as the specialty dining. Yes, the experience up in the specialty dining is intimate, so if that's what you're looking for as an experience, it's an excellent place to go up there at the specialty dining. But if you just wanna have a normal dinner out, you don't have to. The main dining room and the patio itself are excellent. And then the Windows Cafe with the buffet, they always have excellent selections for dinner up there. So that's my conclusion on dining and moving on. So let's talk about the room. So I'm currently here in an inside room on the transatlantic up on deck eight this room is excellent size room for one person but if you had two people in here this would be an amazing room as well you have a lovely couch right behind me and the bed is nice and firm the pillows are excellent you have firm or very very fluffy and then you have a wonderful tv Where are you pointing, Eric? Right there. Anyways, the TV doesn't have the greatest selection on it. You do have about two or three US cable. You have MSNBC, you have Fox News. Um, more in Europe, you have the BBC and you have Sky News. So you have international news as well. Then you have about four to five Asamara channels, which give you different information. We'll have the lectures on. They'll have Sure Excursion Channel, and then they'll have a Azamara Channel. I'm just giving you all the details about the sailings on Azamara. Then you have four to five music channels, mostly jazz, classical music, piano music, excellent music selection, but there's not much entertainment on your TV device. You are out on Azamara cruise to cruise and get into the ports, but on a transatlantic, there's not much entertainment on the TV. 
So just know that in advance, bring a book. Deck five or deck nine is an excellent, excellent place to sit out and just enjoy the lovely book or just listen to music on your phone, iPad, radio, etc. Another thing about this room, um, plenty of space for storage. That's what's nice about the ship, the rooms, the storage is excellent here. Plenty of places to put all your clothing, plenty of hangers, to put your dresses, pants, shirts, jackets, shoes, uh, your bags, you can put them underneath the bed. So excellent space use there. The only issue I have about these rooms is the bathrooms. Yes, the stories are true. The Azamara ships, their bathrooms are tiny. They're the smallest I've ever seen I've seen. They're older ships. I understand there's nothing that they can do about them. Hopefully down the road, they get newer ship. Uh, might take a few years, but that's one thing I will say. The rooms, the bathrooms are tiny. The ugly curtain shower is ugly. Uh, you do have plenty of space to move around in there if you need to use the bathroom to get ready, but just the shower itself is very, very tiny. Uh, the water pressure is really good in there and it does have nice warm hot water. Just gotta be careful with the faucet. Sometimes you turn it up and you get a lot of warm water or cold, but uh, just make sure you turn the faucet the right way because you might be in for a surprise. But besides that, the room is excellent. You're not usually in your room, but on the transatlantic, you do sleep in a little more. So got great use out of the room. So excellent room here on the Azamara. The question I had for myself when I came on Azamara, especially this transatlantic, as transatlantics are normally an older crowd that can get the two weeks off or that can travel for two weeks or more. Am I too young for this cruise line? Do I fit in to this cruise line? Or do you have to be in the older demographic to fit as a mar? Here on the transatlantic, the average age is in the mid 60s. I'm in my mid 30s. So half the age difference than the average age here on this cruise ship. So for me personally, it does not matter. I fit in here. None of the guests have said, you're way too young to be on this cruise. You don't fit here. What are you doing here? Have not got any vibe like that at all. And I truly enjoy the fact that I don't feel judged. Yes, it's an older crowd, but as a person in your mid thirties, you'll enjoy Azamara, the experiences that you get on the cruise, especially in the Mediterranean or in Greece. This is a perfect laid back cruise line where you're gonna get excellent food, the service is outstanding, the entertainment is decent, but it's still enjoyable. So if that's what you're looking So let's get into entertainment here on the Azamar onward. This is personally for the transatlantic. It might be a little different from sailing to sailing. So I just wanted to talk about the entertainment. I am used to the big ships. So you have the Broadway shows, you might have ice skating, you might have a magician, you might have a singer come on board, you might have different types of shows on the bigger ships. So on Azamara, they do have great entertainment. It's going to be a lot different than the big ships. You're definitely not going to have Broadway shows. You will have musicals occasionally but it's gonna be a different kind of entertainment. Currently on the Azamara onward, we have excellent singers and dancers from a group in New York that are gonna be on the onward till November. They're excellent, young, talented singers and dancers. Uh, so first off, our cruise director, this cruise is Martin, who's doing an excellent job. And then he has an assistant cruise director, Roy. Love his Australian accent, excellent singer as well. So the thing with the cruise directors, they do have their own show as well throughout the cruise. So Martin had his show the other night, it was excellent. 
and then Roy, the assistant director as well. Definitely make sure you go check out the cruise director and the assistant director's uh, show. They do many entertainment throughout the day, but uh, they do have their each special day. Make sure you check that out. You'll find that out on the Insider, which is going to be the Asamara um, magazine or booklet to let you know what's going on in a day. So they let you know, like, they have trivia, they have, like, if you want to do a fitness class, they tell you what time that is throughout the day. Uh, definitely plenty of trivia, uh, games, board games going on throughout this transatlantic. I'm gonna leave you guys a little clips of the entertainment so you know what kind of entertainment to expect here on Azamara. Uh, the shows were good. I wouldn't say they're excellent, like a Broadway or musical show, but on a small ship, they do what I expect and make us entertained here on the Azamara Onward. Um, I'm personally not sure if I'd go back and watch them again if I did a back-to-back. -back. But for a 11-night cruise, the entertainment was excellent here on the Azamara. They do keep you interactive into the shows, so I do love that. And the singers and the dancers are excellent. And for being so young, they're so talented. So the ship layout is excellent, and it's very familiar to me. This used to be a princess ship, the Pacific Princess, back from 2000, maybe a few years earlier. But Asamara just bought it in uh, recent years, and they kept the same layout. And it's very familiar to me, so it was nice to come back onto a ship that looked familiar. So we're going to start off on Deck 5. No guest rooms on Deck 5. So starting in the aft, you have the Cabaret Lounge, where they're going to have the nightly entertainment. You're gonna have lectures, lectures there. And then you move on to the middle of deck five where you have the den. There are three key things in the den. You have the Spirits Bar, which is an excellent place to catch trivia in the morning, get a drink. You can get there for before dinner cocktails, before show cocktails, or enjoy the entertainment. The piano player is excellent there in the den. Each night, I usually go there around 10 o'clock, grab a cocktail, and just sit down and enjoy the lovely music played there. And then you're also going to have the cruise next. So when you're ready to book your next Azamara cruise, they will be lovely, helpful there, down there on deck five. And then you have the sure excursions. So when you're ready to book a sure excursion or getting any information for you down there on deck five, and then you have the shops excellent area um, I'm not really into watches or jewelry but they did have a nice selection and they do have the Asamara shirts that you can buy uh, different brands they have uh, Louis Vuitton, Coach, Gucci all your favorites there if you're into that and then you have Mosaic Cafe excellent spot for coffee I love going there and getting a lovely coffee in the morning from Milton excellent coffee maker there and then you have the uh, Discovery Cafe, as we talked about earlier, excellent place for dinner. Um, I'm not really into the sit down restaurants, so I'm usually up on deck nine for the buffet, but deck five is laid out nicely. And on Transatlantic, make sure you go outside to the promenade on deck five. The chairs there are excellent and a nice place to sit down. And then once you go up to deck nine, you have the pool deck, you have the pool bar, and then you have the patio, which you already know is underrated. And then you have the Windows Cafe in the aft. Excellent place to sit outside and enjoy the view at the Sunset Veranda. They used to have a bar back there, but they don't on this ship. On the other ships, they do. And then on Deck 9 forward, you have the fitness and spa area. So if you're into that, it's nice over there as well. But the ship layout is excellent to me. The rooms are nicely spaced out. And yeah, it's easy to get from one place to the other side on a small ship. Overall, the experience here on Azamara is excellent. There are a few pointers that I wanted just for you to know. There's a few things that are included that 
you should already know, but some don't know. So everything is included for dining besides the specialty dining menus, Aquafina and then Prime C. They are both $35 per person. But the main dining room, the buffet, the patio, room service, mosaic cafe, all included. You also have a basic drink package, which includes a few beers, which is Budweiser and Carlsbad, which is on draft. Budweiser comes in cans or bottles. But anyways, you get a rum. You do also get a basic drink package. What's included in that basic drink package is beers, which are basically Budweiser and Carlsbad, which is on draft, and you get a few selection of wines. You will get a complimentary Chardonnay, Saint Blanc, Pinot Grigio, Cabernet Saint Blanc, uh, Pinot Noir, and I might be missing another type of wine. Then you do get spirits as well. You do get a um, vodka, rum, tequila, gin, and a scotch. So for vodka, you're gonna get like Smirnoff. For rum, you're gonna get like Bacardi or Ford Acaña. For whiskey, you're gonna get a Jose Cuervo. I believe it's a Ho Jose Cuervo. And then for rum, you're just gonna get Bacardi Silver. Um, they do have a great selection of drinks that are included, such as martinis, you can get old fashioned, you can get pina colada, uh, a gin and tonic, basically a whole list of drinks are included. They do have top shelf drinks, which you are able to pay per drink, or you can get a drink package. Drink packages start at $16.95 and then they go up to $23.95. Definitely look into what you can get and make the right choice for you. And if you want to drink just the whole entire bar for $23.95, it's an excellent value because some of the cocktails are from $15 to $18. So in two drinks, you pay for the drink package already. It's not going to cost you $80 or more like some cruise lines. But that's one thing that some people don't know is they expect to get a full drink package to get the whole bar, but there is a limited menu on the free included. Yes, it's excellent, plenty of choices, but if you want to drink the more higher quality Grey Goose, um, your rum, your whiskeys like Makers, Jameson, etc., or if you want more quality beers such as Corona, Stella, IPA, etc., Guinness, anything like that, you will have to pay extra for that. So just keep that in mind. Internet will cost you extra on the ship. It's $19.95 a day, or you can get a package for purchase one day or for the whole cruise. But if you get for the whole cruise, it's $19.95 a day. The internet works excellent. They have Starlink on board here, the Azamar onward, and during the transatlantic, it's been working perfect. So the internet is a plus. Uh, some of my issues on this ship is dealing with guest services. I'm not sure what's going on in the cruise industry, but guest services has been a total nightmare for me for the past six months cruising. Yes, I understand they do an excellent job here at guest services. They're trying to do their job but sometimes it feels like I'm talking to a wall when I go to any guest service on a couple ships recently. You ask a question about white night, like when white night's gonna be happening, which is the excellent party here in Azamara. Didn't mention that yet, definitely check out white night, the buffet, the singing, the dancing. It's an excellent night out. But when you go there with a the simple question, when white night is, what time does it start? They've been doing this for many, many times, sailings. You would expect they would know when white night is happening and at what time. I had onboard credit that wasn't showing. They had no idea why I didn't have onboard credit. 
they were telling me that I didn't have onboard credit when I had onboard credit. It did get resolved eventually a few days later, but it's simple things that shouldn't be happening. And from past experiences, from hearing from guests and seeing stories online, it's really sad that guest services leaves a bitter taste here on Asamara because it's kind of frustrating when you should be able to get a simple question answered and it takes days to hear back. And then onboard credit, you have proof to show them that you have onboard credit and it still takes days for it to get loaded up. Uh, but don't let that sour you. The whole crew on the ship is outstanding and they're willing to help you. Even at the bar, some of the bartenders don't know how to make some of the drinks from their menu, but they will get someone to help you and make sure you enjoy your vacation here on Azamara. Onward or any Azamara ship, the biggest part to me is the crew. The crew are outstanding and they feel like family members just after a few days here on Azamara. They get to know you, they know you, your drinks, your food orders before you even sit down sometimes. So it's nice to be recognized on a ship. Um, so we have 450 people and we have 400 crew. So basically one to one ratio, which is an excellent ratio on a ship this size. Let's lighten some things up here after that. Sorry about that. But the itinerary for this ship was one day at port, which was Bermuda. And if you watch the series, you knew I had a wonderful time in Bermuda. If you haven't watched that yet, make sure you watch that video because I had a wonderful time in Bermuda. And um, it was a short day, a nice seven hour day in Bermuda, but it was excellent time and great location in Hamilton. So that's a nice thing about going on Asamar. You get the prime location in Bermuda and easy access to St. George or throughout the whole entire island. Uh, we did end up in the Grand Canaries, which we are today. We did end the cruise in the Grand Canary, where we are today. Uh, great location if you want to do a Grand Canary of the whole Canary Islands. It's a great sp starting sp point here in Grand and Can Canary. Grand Canary. We did end the cruise here today in Grand Canary. An excellent starting point if you want to do the whole Canary Islands with Azamara. They are here for the next month or so before heading over to Lisbon to start the whole Mediterranean season. So um, for 11 nights, I had an excellent time here on the Azamara. The itinerary was short and simple, but I wanted to test out the transatlantic because Azamara is known for a port intensive and this is a different taste of Azamara. Um, I am doing a two week cruise coming up in April from Barcelona to Rome that I'm looking forward towards. So I'll bring you guys along for that for uh, series two. So stay tuned for that as I'm gonna be continuing cruising around the world this year on my world cruise adventure. Not on one ship, but on many different ships. So stay tuned. And if you're looking for more information on Azamara, make sure to stay tuned and watch the videos and make sure you're subscribed. Thank you for an excellent time.